Hey guys, Mr. Tiggles here, and today I wanted to go ahead and go ahead and give you a short guide for those of you who are just starting out on Overwatch and want to try Genji. This is going to be a beginner's guide. I'm by no means an expert, but I've been playing with him for the last couple of days, and I feel like I've gotten the basics down pretty well. Uh, as you know, Genji is a ninja, and you'll be combating your foes in long and short range through the use of a sword, ninja stars, and a fairly decent amount of mobility. Anyone that knows anything about ninjas knows that they are matters of masters of subtlety and deceit, preferring the darkness and sneak attacks to open combat. With Genji, things really aren't going to be much different. You're going to want to stay out of the fray and pick your targets off as they separate themselves from the group. Unfortunately, Genvi Genji has very weak AoE abilities, but he makes up for this by having the potential to deal a literal ass-ton of single target damage if he's played right. Um, really, he is one of those characters that, that he's not going to be easy at first, and you really have to play him to his strengths, but with time, once you start to adjust and get used to him, he's really going to be a, fun, a ton of fun, and he's actually a really good character. The first thing I want to go ahead and do is actually talk about Genji's abilities. So we're going to go ahead and bring up the list of abilities that Genji has here. Uh, the first one that you'll see is his ultimate, Dragon Blade. Uh, basically, this causes him to pull out his sword, and it does a shit ton of damage, and will one-shot most characters. Unless they're tanks like Reinhardt or... Uh, or Roadhog, things like that. Those characters won't die in one hit. They usually take two. Uh, but most other characters will drop in one shot. Uh, it also resets your Swift Strike. So it's a really good idea to use Swift Strike before using Dragon Blade because then you can use it again. Um, the next ability he has is Deflect, which causes him to deflect all incoming projectiles uh, basically back to the, the direction you're aiming at. This is a super good ability for taking out Bastion or any turrets. Um, anything that has a really high rate of fire, basically you can just deflect and just aim your reticule at the the person that you're that's attacking you or whoever you whoever you want to deflect the bolts back at, and it can do a shit ton of damage. Um, so it's really cool. It also works on rockets and things like that. I'm not sure every single type of damage that it does deflect. I'm still uh, I'm still finding new things that you can use that on, um, but it's really really good for survivability. It's really good to get out of get out of harm's way, and it's also good to uh, counterattack some of the, the higher damage players in the game. Um, the next ability we have is Swift, Swift Strike, which basically makes you charge forward really fast and uh, and attack the, anything in your path. This this attack does a lot of damage. I think it does like 130 damage, so it's a really high uh, high damage attack. It's really good for people that are running away. Um, it's also good for um, getting out of harm's way. So if somebody's going to going to attack you, or if you need to move quickly, you can dart forward, sideways. You can dart straight up in the air. Um, so it's a really good way to avoid damage as well. Uh, then he has two different kinds of shuriken attacks. Uh, he's got basically a a barrage of three that does the most single target damage. Um, headshots matter, so you definitely want to hit headshots as as much as possible because they will do a lot of damage. If you're hitting people in the head, I think most uh, most non-tank characters will die in two barrages if they if they take them in the face. Uh, the other shuriken uh, button that you have on well, I'm on PS4, so it will be L2 um, on computer. I'm not sure what it defaults to, um, but he does a fan of three in a straight line, so it's really good for AOE. Um, and I'll definitely show you all these abilities once we're done taking a look here. Uh, the last one that he has uh, is just a passive ability called Cyber Agility. This allows him to run up walls and double jump. So basically any wall you run up to, um, you can actually run up the wall and you can do a double jump. So this is really good for getting on buildings or moving across the map quickly. Uh, so definitely, definitely useful with a character like this where you want to be flanking your enemies. Uh, you have you have a lot of ability to actually get behind them, uh, things like that. So lots of movement abilities and lots of ways to deflect incoming damage. All right, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at each of these abilities separately and talk about their strengths and weaknesses, and I'll go ahead and, and show you each ability. All right, guys, so the first ability we're going to actually start on the right-hand side. The first ability we're going to look at is just his passive ability, um, and it basically which is his ability to move around the map. Uh, and the first thing we're going to show you is his ability to run up walls, which is really, really useful. Now, he can only do this once every time that he actually touches the ground. So if you've double jumped and, and ran up a wall, he will not be able to run up that wall again until he actually, until he's actually touched the ground. Um, so basically you just hold down the jump button and hit the wall. And he will run up and then you can, uh, 
You can use that to get up onto to high surfaces or surfaces you can't quite jump up. So if you jump, you can still run up the wall. Pretty simple, pretty standard, uh, but a useful ability that I actually didn't really know to abuse at first. So it may seem simple, but it was something that took me a little while to catch on to. Um, also, he has a double jump, which can still, even without the wall jump, take you a long ways. And you can actually make some pretty pretty long range jumps with this, especially with the wall run. So as long as you get close to the ledge, he'll actually grab it. And also, it's good to note that you don't only you're not only able to jump on the top of the jump like so. You're actually able to jump after a fall. So you can get almost hit the ground and then jump, which is really good for when you're trying to uh, avoid falling off ledges or if you've accidentally dashed off the map, you can still save yourself by jumping back back onto the map with double jump. The next thing we want to go ahead and take a look at is his shuriken attacks. So we're actually going to head over here to some dummies that don't shoot back. All right. Now, it does a lot more damage when you hit people in the head, but basically the main shuriken attack does a burst of three, which looks like it does almost about half of this bot's health. If you actually shoot for the head, it does almost his entire health bar. So you definitely want to hit people in the head if possible, because you're going to do a lot more damage. The other shuriken attack that he has is a set of three. It does less damage. Let's wait for both these bots to spawn. He throws three in a straight line. Uh, it does a lot less damage, but it is a little bit quicker. So for single target, if you're confident in your aim, you're definitely going to want to throw the three. Um, you can throw in the other ones if you just want to throw out some really fast damage, and it's a little bit uh, requires less accuracy because you don't have to hit something in a straight line. Um, but really learning, the first thing that you want to learn after movement is... How to control your ninja stars and when to use the different ninja stars um, and how to abuse that. The next ability we have is Swift Strike. And basically, this is a charge forward, so all he does is he dashes forward and melees his target. So, this is a really good ability for closing distance on snipers. It's also a really good ability for uh, finishing somebody off that's at low health because it does a lot of damage. Uh, let's go ahead and just see. Yeah, so I did about a quarter of that bot's damage. It's a really good finisher move. So if you notice your opponent's low on health or they're running away, it's a really good move for catching somebody who's running away. It's also a good way to get away from people. So say, yeah, say somebody, uh, say somebody drops something on the ground, or you need to jump over, um, maybe a, a junk rat uh, wheel. You can actually, you can even go straight up in the air with it. Um, so even with your double jump, you can stay in there quite a while. Uh, you can also dash to the side. You can use it if you uh, if you miss a jump and you're not quite going to make it. I, well, I mean, in that example, I jumped over the building. Um, but you can definitely use it to, to uh, get onto a surface they can't quite reach through jumping. Like so. So it's a really useful ability, but you want to make sure not to overuse it because then it won't be off of cooldown in your time of need. So you want to make sure that, uh, that you're only using it when you really need it. The next uh, ability we have is Deflect. This is your most useful survival will, will, a survival ability. And basically what it does is it causes you to block all incoming fire. Let's go ahead and go in here and give, show it to you. So basically what it does is it deflects all bullets back to your targeting reticule. So if you have your targeting reticule not targeted on the person you're trying to deflect from, you'll actually miss. For example, we're hitting the wall. So you want to make sure when you're deflecting that you're targeting back at the person that's shooting at you or the person that you want to kill with the deflect bullets. And then last but not least, we have Dragon Blade. And the main thing I wanted to show you, uh, just a little quick tip about Dragon's Blade, is it actually resets Swift Strike. So basically, you can Swift Strike, and then you can Dragon's Blade, and then you're able to Swift Strike again. And basically, Dragon's Blade doesn't do anything incredibly special, but it makes you do a lot more damage, and you can almost one-shot anybody. Uh, so it's a it's really good ability to use if you you think you can get a lot of melee hits off all at one time. Um, so definitely definitely save that though, because you will not take any reduced damage or anything like that, and you will still die very quickly. 
Um, so I, I've learned that the hard way. There's too many times I've blown it and immediately just gotten killed. You definitely want to make sure that when you use it, you're not in an opportunity where you're just going to get smacked in the face. Because I have run into that so many times. It's definitely... It's one of the harder ultimate abilities that I have come across yet because it's very situational. Some of, some of the characters have ultimate abilities that can pretty much be used at any time and they're really good. With this ability, you really have to use it situ situationally and it'll be really good for you. Alright guys, well that's all I got here for you today. Uh, like I said before, I'm definitely not a Genji S expert, but I've learned the basics and I wanted to go ahead and share them with you guys. So I hope that you could take something from this video. Um, I will be putting up a gameplay or two of uh, Genji with commentary. I definitely already have one of those recorded, so it'll be coming up here really soon. So if you're interested in seeing me actually play Genji in action, check that out. And hopefully it helps you out. Uh, make sure to crush that con uh, crush that like button, subscribe, and leave me a comment. And let me know if there's any characters you'd like me to do a guide on, or that you'd like me to just play. Anyways, thanks for watching. Ta-ta for now.